you. Thanks for having me. Um, I think it's a good idea to get a few people together and, and share, <coughs> share what we're working on. So um, this is a talk that I uh, initially gave in March at CanSec West, which is a conference in uh, Vancouver. And it's about uh, some fuzzing I did this winter. All right, so uh, who am I? Uh, so I was the first one to hack the iPhone and the G1 phone. The iPhone was like three years ago. I'm trying to remember what bug that was. Um, it was, so I found that bug with fuzzing, uh, and it was actually the same bug in both phones. Uh, I won this Hono competition actually three years, there's 2010 as well. Most of those bugs were fuzzing, some I think weren't. Uh, I wrote a book with, with Ari, and we've signed some of them, uh, and another book called Mac Hacker's Handbook. Actually, another fuzzing book too that's really bad, I wouldn't recommend. Okay, right, so uh, what are we going to talk about? So this is this is what my actual talk was at, at CanSec West. It was an hour though. I only have 20 minutes now, so I've, I've cut it. So I'll, I'll do the beginning uh, more or less the same, so the setup for fuzzing. And then I'll start I'll start to get into it, so I fuzz PDFs and PowerPoints. Um, so hopefully I'll get through at least most of the PDF stuff, and then I'll jump to, uh, you know, wrap it up. So you're going to miss the, the, the PowerPoints, and you're going to miss sort of the the closing truths. So if, if you're interested, the, the full slide deck is available at securityevaluators.com. Okay, so um, first, let's compare what what you know what I'm going to be talking about compared to something that like uh, maybe Microsoft or you know a large company would do. So you know a lot of companies don't talk about what they fuzz, but Microsoft was kind of to at least publish some statistics on what they've done. So when Vista was rolling around, this was you know a few years ago. Uh, Microsoft uh, issued some, some statistics. So 15 months they fuzzed, 350 million iterations, 250 plus file parsers. Um, and so if you, if you do the math there, that's about 1.4 million iterations per parser. And uh, they found somewhere around 300 issues. I'm not sure if those were like security issues, but I assume so. So my talk, I fuzzed for three months, I fuzzed four things. So I fuzzed Adobe Reader and Preview for PDF, and I fuzzed OpenOffice and PowerPoint for uh, PowerPoint slides, so PPT files. Um, so four things I fuzzed, three months, seven million iterations, and so it works out to 1.8 million iterations, so you know, it's sort of in the same ballpark as what Microsoft did, except you know, it's just me and my four computers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the other thing is, um, so Microsoft probably put a lot of effort into making very high quality test cases, and I didn't. I, I, as you'll see, I chose sort of the, the the most brain dead approach, and I still actually found some stuff. So the idea is, even though I fuzzed the same number of test cases, they're not as good, so I shouldn't find as much as Microsoft did. We wouldn't expect to. So, so let's get into the, the setup here. So there's a couple ways you can fuzz, right? Um, at least two ways, there's, there's more probably. Um, there's dumb fuzzing, which uh, you don't want to sound quite so. Uh, can you hear me, by the way, or do I need a microphone? Wait, I don't want to wear it, I don't have to. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah, yeah. I hear you well. All right, great. Um, so uh, mutational based fuzzing is another name for it. Uh, the idea is you take good input, so you know maybe a file or a command line or whatever, a network packet, and you tweak it. So you add random changes to it and you send it into the program. This is really easy to do. It doesn't take any knowledge. Like I don't have to understand how uh, you know a PDF looks. I don't have to understand the spec. All I have to do is take a PDF and make random changes to it. It's very easy. Um, and then the other alternative is smart fuzzing, and this is actually what Codenomicon does. So uh, they, they understand the spec, they understand exactly what, what the file is going to look like, uh, all possible things that can show up in a PDF file, and then they make, they don't actually, I don't think the PDFs, but Smart Fuzzing does, uh, you know, they, they make every conceivable mutation of a PDF, and then you fuzz with that. And, and the, the drawback is, you know, it takes a lot of experience and expertise to, to come up with all these PDFs, but once you do it, you know, you're going to get the, in, you know, in theory, the highest quality uh, fuzzing. Okay, so, so what I did was I tried to find some sort of compromise because I don't want to take the time to learn all these specs, but then again, I know if I just flip bits, I'm probably not going to find that much. So what I did was I took, uh, instead of just taking one PDF and cha making changes, I took lots of PDFs, or lots of PowerPoints, and I make changes. And the idea is that if you fuzz just for with one PDF, you're fuzzing whatever features happen to live inside that PDF. So maybe there's a compressed stream, maybe there's an image, I don't know. Um, but what you're fuzzing is whatever happens to be there. You're not going to fuzz like a whole new, you know, part of the spec that's not even present in the file. But if you start fuzzing with lots of different files, then maybe, you know, if, if there was a bug in, you know, uh, JBIG2 or something, as long as you have one file that has a JBIG2 in it and you're fuzzing that, well, maybe that's the same, more or less, as if you would have, you know, 
written the spec for JPEG2. So um, definitely if there's going to be CRCs or compression or something, you're going to still be screwed. But the idea is hopefully, without doing anything harder than just downloading a bunch of PDFs, uh, you're still, it's still going to be really easy and hopefully it'll be better than dumb posing and, and somewhere in the ballpark of, of smart posing. How did I choose uh, my files? Well, I just downloaded basically everything I could. Uh, so for example, in PDF, I downloaded 80,000 PDFs from the internet. There's lots on the internet. Um, and then I did code coverage to figure out, you know, I don't want two files that are almost exactly the same with different text, right? That doesn't help me fuzzing. So I did code coverage for each file, and then I minimized the set of, of files that, so they would still have the same code coverage. Um, so the idea is, so I reached it down to, to 80, from 80,000 down to 1,500. So the 1500 still had the same code coverage as the 80,000. Hopefully I'll find the same bugs, but I only have to fuzz 1500 files instead of 80,000 files. And, and some people at, at Cancer Quest asked me, so how did you know there weren't like, you know, viruses or exploits in these PDFs that you downloaded? I was like, well, I, I don't know. As, you know they, I, I, they didn't take my bank account, I guess. That's how I know. There's been plenty of time they would have cleaned me out by now. Okay, so, and, and then what did I do for my actual fuzzing? This is it, five lines of code. You know, just randomly pick a number of bytes, randomly pick positions in the file, randomly change those bytes to, to something else. That's it. So I didn't really expect to find much, right? Maybe in open office or something, but, uh, and, and like, you know, high quality code, I wouldn't expect to really find much like this. Um, but actually I did. So uh, why did I call this talk uh, babysitting, right? It's babysitting army monkeys. Because, you know, I turn it on and I expect to come back in three months, but it doesn't work that way. Things crash. Uh, this is a kernel panic on my Mac OS X computer that was fuzzing. Um, you can actually see a virtual machine. So I was fuzzing two instances here, right? Really high power. So, uh, so anyway, I had, I had initially I had to like restart the fuzzer once in a while, do that sort of thing. Um, and then the other thing is the only good news is I would use my my kid's computer to, to fuzz as well. I don't know if you can see that. And, uh, so, but I had to train them that when it, when I found a bug and it popped up and it said, "Do you want to report this to Apple?" I had to train them to hit no. So, and, and they got good at that. All right, so uh, let's move on to the very first thing I fuzzed, which was Adobe Reader. So I, I just fuzzed PDFs for them. So some stats, this was Adobe Reader 9.2.0, which was uh, the latest and greatest at the time, but this was back in like November, so, it, so it's not the latest and greatest anymore. Um, I did three million test cases, and I, I tried to keep a lot of data on, on what, what I found, what I did. So uh, for example, the, I wasn't really trying to go really fast. I was more concerned with finding, <coughs> making sure that I found a bug if there was one, than seeing how many test cases I, I, could, I could pump through. And this is sort of a difference I actually have with Ben Nagy, who's giving a talk at Black Hat tomorrow or the next day about fuzzing, where he's like really concerned with, I want to fuzz as many test cases as possible. And I'm like, well, I'd rather go a little slower and make sure the thing has enough time to run, and I'm very confident that there was no bug in that run and that sort of thing. So anyway, uh, depending on, on what I was doing at the time, sometimes I could do 132 a minute, like Ben Nagy could do like thousands. And sometimes if they're all crashing, it took a while to start back up, I was only getting seven a minute. All right, so here, here's, here's how, like the main meat of, of this 